Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over these Trojan Motive T1275 12 volt 150 amp hour batteries. They are flooded lead acid and let me go over the specs for you real quick here. Uh, weighs 85 pounds a piece and I've got two of them tied in parallel connected with two aught cables negative to negative positive to positive to form one 300 amp hour battery basically by tying them like that you just increase your amp hours and keep the voltage the same so each one of these 150 amp hours tied together 300 which really just gives you a usable 150 amp hours of power every day and if you cycle them within those uh, parameters of no more than 50 percent these will last you a very long time so I use this to add a bit of redundancy to my household uh, power capabilities. In the beginning of the pandemic, uh, decent batteries were starting to be hard to find out here. And being on an island, we are totally dependent upon cargo ships coming and going for supplies, especially for things like these. And in the beginning, there was a lot of uncertainty about what we were going to have available to us and since I had my main battery bank in the house starting to wear out I started searching around as fast as I could in various places and to find something decent to use um, so I ran across one of these first and there was only one available and so I grabbed that and figured well that would be a, a great little backup and it has been. And then I decided to go ahead uh, a few months later and tie a second one in to give me even a little more redundancy. And this has really worked out well. I'm a big fan of Trojan. I've used uh, two different sets for two different uh, periods of my life living off grid. I got a full 10 years off of both sets. The first set I used was a, the L16s which I am a huge fan of, but if any of you have used L16s, you know that they are extremely heavy, and I'm getting to the age where I do not want to be lifting those things around anymore. 85 pounds here is plenty for me to be lifting. So, and then the second set I had uh, were the T105s, which are the 6 volts, as well as the L16s were 6 volt. And... I got a solid 10 years out of both of them. Now I treated them well, I gave them regular maintenance, you know, checked the water, topped it off every single month, just like clockwork, and I very rarely ever discharge them below 50%, which is key in keeping these alive for the number of years that I did. And I, I worked them pretty good and was able to get, like I said, 10 years out of each bank. So I expect nothing less of these. These are are being fully charged every single day. I'm only cycling about the oh, top 20% at most every day. So they're mostly sitting in a float condition throughout the entire day. And then I use a little bit of power at night. Really like these. I expect these to go 10 years at least with the way I take care of them. Barring anything unforeseen like a lightning strike, which is what I've experienced twice before, which did shorten the life of both of those previous Trojan banks that I used to use. Took direct hits on my dwelling both times with those banks, and uh, that shortened them quite a bit. I mean, 6 million volts coming in will shorten the battery's life pretty fast. So anyway, barring anything like that, these ought to last a good long time. And I'll show you what I've got them hooked up to. So if you've seen any of my previous videos on running that uh, lithium battery, you're going to see the same thing here. 
I really like these units. This is the EP ever uh, 20 amp charge controller, which is just fine for these purposes. And then the MT50 for adjusting your parameters. And going into those two batteries, I've got these two 100 watt 12 volt panels by NUA Power. And if you watched any of my earlier videos on this, you'll see I went over why I like the NUA Power 12 volt 100 watt panels for several reasons. But anyway, that's what I've got going in there to charge those Trojans. So 200 watts coming in to a 300 amp hour battery. Uh, like I said, they get fully charged every day, even in low light conditions. Those NUA Power uh, panels do very well. They're the monocrystalline. Uh, couldn't be happier with those in low light conditions. And we get a lot of cloudy days here. So even on low light days like that, um, no problems charging these up. And if, if I'm in direct sunlight, it doesn't take very long at all. So the, the bulk charge on these, they like to get up to 14.8 every day. Uh, they want to be floated at 13.5 and equalize at 16. Now, you know, a lot of these uh, charge controllers, unless you uh, change the, the equalization aspect to it, it's going to try to equalize once a month. I personally don't like to equalize these things that often. Uh, there's some debate over that, but equalizing does degrade your battery to some degree. And if you're getting up to a full charge every day and resting and float for most of the day, I just don't see uh, the reasoning for uh, equalizing that often. So I very rarely equalize. Um, maybe once a year is all I ever did with my previous Trojans even though that wasn't what they recommended, uh, because I did take very good care of them and kept an eye on them. I was always pretty aware of their capacity and, and how they were working for me. And I wanted them to last as long as possible. And, and that worked for me. Now, your mileage may vary depending on how you use them, but if you take care of them, I don't see the need for a monthly equalization. Now, if you're working them really hard and, and wearing them out, then yeah, I can see doing that. But um, I, I don't run my batteries like that. Um, if I ask a lot of them, uh, it's just for a short period of time. Other than that, I am very, uh, just kind of frugal about how I use these things because I want them to last. So, and I just wanted to say another reason I really like having the, the redundant, redundancy of a, another system in case you're, you know, you ever want to do some maintenance or rearranging of the current system you have up, you're not under the gun to get it all put back together the same day. You know, you have a little leeway you can tie into your uh, secondary system and, you know, whether you're moving panels, cleaning panels, tearing the battery systems apart and cleaning everything up uh, periodically, then uh, it's nice to be able to not have to finish that project in a day and still have power for, for at nighttime. Um, <clears throat> these have a, uh, you know, they, they are the flooded lead acid. So, you know, they do need to be topped off with distilled water only. Do not ever put your tap water in here. That's not good for them. That will degrade your batteries too. And I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but right in there, there's a little inner flange that comes down on all of the cells. And it goes down a, close to an inch to the top of the water. And you don't want to fill it past the bottom of that flange in there. Uh, if you go up past there, and some people even bring the water up closer to the top, do not do that. All you're going to get is a lot of splashing out and a lot of moisture on top of your batteries, battery acid that does not need to be there. And if you keep the water level just at the bottom of that flange, 
or maybe even below. Then when you're getting up to a full charge every day of running it up to 14.8 and they're boiling, you're not going to get any spillover. And that just keeps everything much cleaner for you. Now you can see here I've just got a little bubble wrap wrapped around here it's because of where they're sitting. Sometimes if the rain's coming in this way, uh, it can get a little moist in there. But for the most part, they stay high and dry. So anyway, these are the Trojan Motive T1275s. Love the Trojans. Love the lead acid, flooded lead acid. They work well. Hopefully they'll be around when I'm in my 70s. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this or anything else, just give me a shout. Aloha.